Hello people of Defend the House and welcome back to another one of mine and Jameson's long talky videos. We're doing another monthly roundup. We are going to be rounding up the games from what month is it? September? Mm -hmm. September. More or less. We have Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle which came out at the end of August. We have the Destiny 2 console release. We have Dishonored 2, Death for the Outsider, an expansion for Dishonored 2, and the newly released Cuphead. Four games. There's actually no 2 in the Dishonored title. I just noticed oh, that. It's just shit. Dishonored. I'm a phony. Huh. Complete hack fraud. Dishonored, well, Death for the well Outsider. Close the video now. You don't actually need the second one, do you, to play it? It's completely optional. It's 100% standalone. Yeah, it's like Uncharted. Cool. Yeah. But the thing is... I don't have a Nintendo Switch, <laughs> so I haven't played Mario Rabbids, and I'm waiting for yeah. the PC release of Destiny 2, so I haven't played Destiny 2. <laughs> so I hope you have brought some water along, Jameson, because you're going to be having a long old chat at the beginning of this video. Oh shit, I actually don't have any oh, beside me. Uh, this is a problem. Uh, for disclosure purposes, we received Mario... <clears throat> Uh, Mario and Destiny 2 um, from the respective publishers, so Ubisoft and Activision, sent us copies for free. Do bought. with that what you will. Absolutely bought. Um, yeah. So, I was just going to say, like, um, we're going to do... The Destiny 2 part is probably going to be relatively... <laughs> relatively short. And uh, then we're going to do, like, a full... Destiny 2 review probably in November? Yeah. It'd have to be in November. Yeah, uh, once, once you've played the PC version. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be a little more in-depth. Because you once. haven't played the Rage yet, have you? Which is kind of like a big part no, of it. No, no, I haven't. Well, it is. But, like, you know, there's no point in talking about the quality of the strikes or, like, the visual, you know, stuff like that. Like this, when I get to Destiny, I think it'll just be sort of a broad... Like the the format and how it runs and how it works. Yeah, yeah. But before that, mm -hmm. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Yeah. The great surprise of E3. That was where, a fun reveal. That really was. Um, yeah, so if people don't know, this is a Mario game made by Ubisoft, where you have Mario and Rabbid characters in the same universe. And it's a turn-based tactical strategy game, like XCOM. And it was made using the same uh, engine that was made for The Division, which is super weird. If people haven't seen footage of this, of this beforehand, um, they're going to think you're insane. Yeah. I'm sure they have. I mean, that was maybe the best thing about E3 was seeing that game revealed and just understanding what the hell it is. <laughs> yeah. They're making a Mario XCOM game. It's with rabbits. Like it's just such a bizarre thing. Yeah, it's to very exist. And um, the bizarreness is not just in its concept. There's that game is weird. Um, not necessarily from like a gameplay point of view. It's pretty straightforward. It's just the rabbit stuff, isn't it? Well, that game just has really weird stuff in it. There's. The premise, uh, story-wise, is the rabbits. I don't know. The the rabbits can travel in a time machine. I think that's established canon. But there's some. I think some like base world or third world or something where there's this kid who's really smart and she's trying to solve the energy crisis. <laughs> And she, like, accidentally invents, like, a VR visor or something that can bring things and merge things, merge things and create, like, new creations or something like that. And then the rabbits show up from their world in their time-traveling washing machine wow. and accidentally pull in the Mario poster on her wall and accidentally pull <sighs> in the VR headset and the VR headset goes off in the time machine and it creates this hybrid world of... Um, what's Mario's world called? I don't know. The Mush Mushroom Kingdom. Mushroom Kingdom, yeah. With the rabid world, which I don't even know if that has a name. It probably does. Mm. It's probably like, blah, or something. <laughs> uh, and 
So, like, the main antagonist of the game is technically Bowser Jr., but he is wielding this horrible, poor creature that is a rabid who has had the VR headset, like, physically merged into his face. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and every time it gets terrified, it shoots the VR laser beams and merges new things and more monstrosities are born. Ugh, it's kind of And dark. You're, you're helping all the rabbits and the kingdom free itself of this terror every time you quote unquote kill something it's more it's basically it's actually called de-rezzing them Mm. which is weird um you have a Roomba that's sort of like the cursor that you move around I've seen that Um, yeah yeah, it's a Roomba basically with ears and it swears sometimes um which is weird because you just get in the text bubble a bunch of asterisks you know symbols and asterisks yeah which is weird. Um, just the other day, I encountered new enemy types that have... Um, they're like fembots from Austin Powers in that they have boob guns. What? They're bo- boob gatling guns. Oh, my God. Um, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the intro for the World 3 boss fight, um, He the boss fight in World 3, he's like a, a an operatic phantom rabid hybrid. And the opening is like a three or four minute long opera number. Fuck yeah. About Mario and how much Mario is a phony. Wow. (laughs) And he keeps like giving more and more of the performance the further into the boss battle you get. It is. That sounds amazing. An absolutely bizarre game. Not just from its concept, but also in its its world and its humor and all the weird shit they throw into it. it's one of the big parts of what I've enjoyed about this game so much. I should go back and say, it's pretty darn good. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's so what makes it. Well, I mean, you know, it's it, it's XCOM like. I don't know. I'm sure there are many other games that are tactical, turn-based mm-hmm. strategy, but XCOM is my reference. Um, because it's what it, you know. That's the most traditional of those that I've played, and. Um, it's pretty, I think I've said to you, it's like, it's, it's a pretty accessible sort of my first XCOM yeah. style game. There's uh, a lot of reduction in variables and bullshit um, in this game. So like hit percentages, it's either 0% hit chance, 50% hit chance, or 100% hit chance. Okay. Um, so none of this like, oh, I have a 64% chance to hit or, you know, stuff like that. It's... It's either you have no line of sight to them because they're fully behind cover or they're half behind cover and you can maybe get them or you're 100% going to get them. Stuff like that. It it makes it a lot easier. Um, Just in the gameplay, a lot less of that horrible XCOM bullshit where you just miss something when it says 99%. 99, yeah. Um, The first world was really easy. And it was, like, worrying. Hmm. It was, you know, because uh, Mario... Well, Nintendo games in general, even though this is not technically a Nintendo game, it's a Switch exclusive, it's Mario, it might as well be a Nintendo game. Which, yeah. I mean that fully in all the positives as well, because it is so well-made and so good-looking and so full of charm and all that stuff that it, it might as well be made by Nintendo. But... Their games can be pretty easy up until mm-hmm. maybe the Switch. Like, we're, we'll see what Mario Odyssey is like, but they sort of, you know, Zelda, not an easy game. Um, yeah. Splatoon, I don't know. But, you know, the, the Wii U games, it's like, this is all way too easy. And so the first world was uh, a little concerning. But they ramp up the difficulty really nicely as it goes on which I've been very pleasantly surprised by. Um, World 3, like, was kicking my ass a little bit. Uh, the boss fight at the end of World 3, I ha- it took me, like, 45 minutes to beat him. Mm. Um, there's a really nice ramp up in difficulty. It never gets insurmountable. It's not like XCOM 2, which I know you haven't played, but I played. No. And on normal, I couldn't... I couldn't progress in that game. I couldn't I could barely even... It, it was so goddamn difficult. And even on easy, the first few hours of that game are, like, absolutely savagely brutal. 
Wow. And then and then it sort of levels out and it gets a little. The thing too is, easy. What, what from what I played <coughs> of the original XCOM, it yeah. felt pretty ruthless to the uneducated. Are you sure there wasn't just systems in XCOM two you hadn't got to grips with? I shouldn't be derating this for review, but I'm in, I'm interested. No, my understanding, like from the more hardened XCOM folks, is that mm. XCOM two is fucking hard. Okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> A lot of uh, the first XCOM certainly difficult, but I, I don't remember not being too overwhelmed by it. And that was my first time ever playing a turn-based anything. Um, but you know, like this game, just th alone not having that percentage bullshit hmm. goes a long ways. But it's um, yeah, the difficulty uh, steadily has been increasing in a way that I like. Um, it's gotten, it's never been, it's never felt insurmountable or or like frustratingly difficult but they've done a good job of making it so that you know i have to actually think about my turns a little bit you know and and mm. sometimes i've had a few game over screens where all my characters have been knocked out and i've had several where i barely beat the level um which is nice i i wasn't expecting that uh it's nice to be it's a nice counter to divinity let's say where <laughs> That game is a hardcore ass PC RPG with some pretty brutal, unforgiving turn-based combat. I can just, you know, pick up Mario and play a level. And it, even when it's challenging, it's not frustrating. Mm. Um, what else is there to say about the? Uh, there's oh, it's there's a lot. It's a surprisingly big game. Um, okay. The Switch counts time played in chunks of five hours. And then, so it's, I have 15 hours or more played. So That's bizarre. Yeah, when it gets to 20, it'll switch to 20 hours or more. How so can it's a like, system not just time you? I don't know. It, it is timing <laughs> you. It's just not displaying the exact time. It's like I might have played like 18 and a quarter hours, but it's just saying you've played 15 or more hours, and what it'll weird system. tick okay. up in five-hour increments. It's very strange. Um, but I've only done, uh, I think... I just started the last world. Um, I've only done half of the collectibles and a third of the challenges. So if you were to like 100% this game, it's probably like 30 hours or so. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, which is very, very solid. And um, it's a really good game to play in short bursts, I think. Yeah. Um, like 30 minutes, an hour maybe. Um, part of that is due to the game not being like terribly varied. Um, the combat is the combat. Like you have upgrades, you can get better weapons. There's a f decent character selection, you know, roster. But you do like three or four, maybe three combat encounters. And you're sort of like, okay, I'm good for now. Because aside from the combat, there's not a lot to do. There's some exploration between combat encounters, some puzzle solving in there, you know, collecting coins, stuff like that. But the in-between combat is not super interesting. Hmm. They, there's a lot, there are not a lot of puzzles, but there are some puzzles in there, and they're all sort of a little t tedious, unfortunately. Um, it's fun collecting coins, you know, and, and finding other things. There is a secret world or like a secret bonus level on every in each world which is sort of neat i've only found one of them um but the in-between stuff is sort of like eh, you know they they definitely needed something to do in between combat um, yeah and and this is fine it could have been better though i think the i don't know what they would do to make it better maybe if it was just the puzzles were more interesting um they're just sort of like a lot of them you just get to it and you're like, okay, I know how to do this. I just have to like try all the combinations until it works. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Not super interesting. Um, but when it's played in, you know, 30, 45 minutes, it's sort of like, oh, that was fun. And now I can just put my switch down and go to something else. And then I'll come back and play another 30 minutes of it tomorrow or something like that. And it's like, it's an easy game to, to put down for a long period of time and then just pick back up again. Yeah, because it's not very complicated, and uh, yeah, it's it's really solid. It's I've wait. I'm just looking at my notes here. <laughs> oh yeah, you can't. 
You, you can't fucking unselect Mario from the party. Really? He always has to be there. Mario <clears throat> is the leader, and you can he ha is always there. Hmm. So you have two choices. You know, you have only three characters they bring into a fight, and one of them is always Mario. And I don't like that. Um, then you have to it. always have a rabbit or a what do you call it, mushroom guy in your team as well. Yeah, you can't have a full stack of Mushroom Kingdom folks. To my, can't break to my the uh, the title. The, you know, yes, it always Mario has to be. Rabbids. It always has to be Mario plus a rabbit plus maybe another rabbit or another Mario friend. Um, and also, Mario sucks in this game <laughs> from a gameplay, like a combat perspective. You yeah. know. Uh, he's got a like one of the shortest default movement ranges, and his attacks are just like, eh, they're fine. Fucking Mario Rabbit, though? Murderer. He is a chaotic <laughs> hell machine. And Peach? Boy, watch out for Peach. She just... Oh, she's got a huge-ass shotgun cannon thing. Just destroys everyone. But Mario? <laughs> Mario's just got like, eh, I've got a gun. Eh. eh I, it's a small complaint. It's like, uh, I don't want to bring Mario in, but like, it's called... It's a Mario game, you know, not, being, not made by Nintendo. Of course... They're going to have some weird rules that they imply. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, or or whatever. Um, it's a small complaint. But overall, it's it's uh, excellent, I think. Um, I would say it's the most enjoyable Switch game that I have played so far. I know that will not line up with most people. But yeah. in my exp that's just how I am. And... Um, the Nintendo Switch continues to be a really good little console, I think. Um, yeah, I've I actually started looking into picking one up maybe next month. Yeah, I just really enjoy using it. It's it's. Do you play it docked or always handheld? <clears throat> I just... The, here's the great thing about the Switch. I just do whatever I want with it. when it, what, Like what I feel like. Mm -hmm. You know, I just play it how I feel like it. So last night I played it docked. And the game, by the way, looks incredible in docked mode. Um, it's like slightly higher resolution or something. Cleans okay. up amazingly. It's a great looking game. But I, I, yeah, last night I was like, I'm just going to play this on my TV because I want to sit on the couch. But you can just, you know, slide the controllers in, pick it up and go somewhere else and, and lie down or, or sit and play it or take the controllers off and flail your arms about and play it play on the switch like it, the nice thing about it is you can just sort of play it in whatever form you want and mm. it, it's all good no matter how you are playing it like every permutation has been enjoyable and comfortable and that's what i, I i've when i'm here at my house i because i traveled with it for the first time when i'm here it's like Probably 50 50 docked, undocked usage, I would say. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the Switch is a good console. I like it. I like using it. And I like Mario Rabbids a lot. It's bright as hell and colorful and full of weird charm and great animations and superb music. And, and it's, it's utterly unique and fascinating like i don't know how this came to be <laughs> yeah i don't know how nintendo approved of a cursing roomba to be standing beside mario i don't know how they put gun boobs into this game or <laughs> any of these things but it's fascinating and charming and uh one of the most like baffling games i've ever seen <laughs> in terms of just how did this happen <laughs> and um, I think if you have a Switch, it's it's like a must play. Honestly, it's uh, especially also for people who don't have much experience with turn based strategy. I think it's a really good, like I said, you know, my first XCOM. It's a really good um, entry point for the genre. I think because there yeah. aren't really a lot of those on the PC. I mean, there are there are a couple, but for the most part, turn based strategy is hard to get into i think because mm -hmm. it's unforgiving and um mario is mario plus rabbit's kingdom battle it's quality product mm. um 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't beaten it yet, so maybe it goes to shit in the last uh, world. <laughs> but yeah. I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, I definitely think it's something that I will be picking up whenever I get my Switch. Yeah. That and probably yeah. the upcoming Mario. That sounds like a, like a good time, a good starting lineup for a new console. Mm-hmm. So that's Mario. It looked cool. great when it was announced. It looked weird. It looked fun. Turns out it is it is all of those things. Be interesting to see if it has any sort of consequences on future games. Like, will they use this setup universe where uh, <laughs> universes can merge from different franchises and take it in a different direction? Maybe it well, sells really, well and they like it, yeah. and Zelda comes into the next one. Who knows? It's a really interesting like business thing. Um, you know, Nintendo oh, yeah. has already proven this year that they're. <clears throat> They're on board now with trying new and weird things. You know, they've done a mobile game. They've done Zelda, which was very different. They've done this, which is crazy. Mario Odyssey looks pretty bonkers and yeah. different. And it's um, I, I do wonder if they do any more projects like this in the future because it, it definitely proves that with the right people and the right circumstances, they can make a really good Mario game that is not made by Nintendo at all, which is... Mm-hmm. Um, an exciting prospect because there's i bet there are a lot of developers out there not at nintendo that would have some pretty good ideas of what they could do with a mario game or mario world you know or something you know the setting and the character yeah i'm all i'm all for this the the best yeah. thing about nintendo even if you're not even like buying their console just spectating nintendo is they're just always weird, quirky, experimenting and doing different things. And I feel like for, for at the Wii and Wii U lifespan, they were trying to like catch up a little bit with yeah. the other consoles. And now it's <laughs> like, let's just go be weird over here again. And I'm down with that. Continue being weird, Nintendo. Yeah, or, or let Ubisoft be weird for you because yeah. um, they're pretty good at being really weird. Like this game is weird in a way that Nintendo games are not weird, um, <laughs> which is cool. It's it's uh, yeah, it's a very neat thing, and I uh, I like it a great deal. Sweet. Yeah. You might so, as well. You're the only one talking about this next game, so you have to segue yourself. Well, okay. So next on the next on the block is Destiny Two. Um, you should we should say first um, like what our experiences are with Destiny. Yes, that's true. So I played a lot of it. A little from bit day one. Did. <laughs> I would that? say you <clears throat> treated Destiny as an MMO, and I treated mm. it like a first-person shooter. Does that logic make any sense? Mm, like, you I, got into the grinding aspects, and I was looking for the unique content. That's what I'm trying I to get I've always at. felt Destiny is not really an MMO. It's more, it's a loot game, you know? It's a loot yeah. game in the way that Diablo 3 is a loot game, in theory. Mm-hmm. Um, I treated the first game as a game that I would play a lot and then take a break from and when there was new stuff added I'd play a lot of it again and mm-hmm. um, see all of the unique content definitely do a fair amount of grinding for new stuff and then put it down for a few months and pick it back up again I, over the over its lifespan I put about 560 hours into it so <laughs> fucking hell <clears throat> it's a lot of time yeah so I, you know, it's not 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 as much as a lot of people have, but it's a healthy amount, or a rather hmm. unhealthy amount. Yeah, of I was um, a little bit different. I think my total <clears throat> playtime was forty-eight hours. Think, was I t- two or three days? I can't remember. I think it was like seventy or something. Possibly, maybe yeah, a bit over three exactly. days. We checked yeah, the BNS like a while back. Um, I actually really enjoyed what was there of Destiny 2. There was the whole kerfuffle at the beginning where people thought it was going to be something it wasn't. But once you like push past that barrier where you're like, well, this is what we got. Let's oh, see Destiny 1. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, from mm. so my Destiny 1. Um, I enjoyed the unique content, but it really lost me after yeah. Crota's End, where there was this cycle of grinding and you couldn't partake in the raids, which were the, at, the, at that time was the thing I was really sticking on for. I loved the raids. And then I had to get back into this circle of grinding and getting my <laughs> light up so that I could, I could even play with you guys. And I just kind of decided, no, I'm mm-hmm. out. I've just had enough of this cycle. Uh, and we should say that I have played the Destiny 2 beta. I haven't completely avoided Destiny 2. I played it on the PS4 and on PC. You played a bit of the live game as well. Yes, that is true. Yeah. 
Um, and my very basic opinions of Destiny 2 is it, it feels better, which is amazing because Destiny 1 felt great. And it looks like the changes they have made are going to be appealing to me. But for yes. me, the PC <clears throat> version felt so fucking phenomenal <laughs> that yeah. when I played the PS4 version we got sent, I was like, I really think that I could wait for the PC version. I loved it so much, the way it played. And, you know, I haven't got so much spare time. I can put that into catching up with other things. So I decided <clears> to put down the PS4 version and leave it to you. So yeah. I don't have much experience. I've done a strike. I've done some campaign missions, and I like what You've I've seen. You've done a strike? I... Yeah. I don't think we, you have. We, we did a strike. Oh, in the beta. In the beta. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right, yes. Did that one. Yeah. The inverted spire, yeah. Um, I think it's a wise decision to wait for the PC version. Um, okay. If I was a strong-willed <laughs> individual, I would do the same thing. <laughs> but with Destiny, I, I, I needed to know immediately. And, <laughs> okay. And to be honest, like I mean, I like I said, five over five hundred hours <coughs> into the game on the PS4 in the first game, like having even though I've played the PC version at high frame rate and high resolution and all that jazz. I have a very well established muscle memory with Destiny on a controller on a TV at 30 FPS, so uh, you know, I, I could jump into it without any issues. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say if you're waiting for the PC version, it's it's a smart move because that game on the PC is really really good. It's kind um, of crazy. So yeah, it is. It is a little bit. Um, so yeah, we'll do like a really proper, extensive review once the game is out. I'm very curious to see. How, <clears throat> excuse me, how you enjoy it, how much you play it, stuff like that. Yeah, um, we'll see. Um, what you said, I think you said, it seems they've made this game easier for people like me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 100%, almost to a fault. Yes. Okay. I actually yeah. thought you were going to say not right at the <clears throat> end. No. Okay, they, good. They... So I mean, like we'll get you know we can get a couple of the basics out of the way. They made a, a story with a campaign, or rather, they made a campaign with a story. There we go, um, <laughs> with people who talk and you know what's going on in each mission and you know what happens throughout the entire campaign. Victory, good job, um, Check. because the first game was incomprehensible nonsense. Yes, and the first game was interesting. It was terrible for a year, and then the Taken King came out, and it was great from then on. I think um, the Taken King like solved so many problems and did so much. There was still a lot of peripheral bullshit, but the core of it was improved so substantially. They figured out how to tell stories, yada, yada, yada. So Destiny 2 continues that. The story is pretty boring and trite and cliche. And when it's over, you've already forgotten it happened because let's be honest, Destiny is not about the story. It's about you shooting things and getting better guns. Like, <laughs> I mean, and, and they know that now. Um, so yeah, regarding making it easier for you, they have cut out so much stuff from the first game that it's kind of shocking a little bit. Okay. okay. Like, and, and by stuff, I mean unnecessary shit, <laughs> which is a good thing. So they've made it so that there are almost no currencies. There are no crafting materials. There are no, there's, you don't have to level up your gun and get crafting materials from planets to level up that gun. There's no strange coins or modes of light or ascendant materials, which I know you know what all those things are. Um, yeah. But seriously, like that, it, it, it's a substantial change because, so now every planet just has a vendor and everything you do gives you tokens that you redeem at that vendor and increase their reputation. And then when you get a level up, you get an engram from them and it drops gear. And okay. <clears throat> that is like 90% of all of the materials and everything. They like, there are a bunch of different materials and names of things that you're getting constantly, but they all serve the exact same purpose. They all do the exact same thing, which is leveling up your vendors. And, that that is like a huge it's it, it 
doesn't sound like it on paper, but the 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 significance that plays is is huge. I think in terms of simplifying the game, um, you don't have to level up your guns anymore, which is a little crazy. Um, oh yeah, you don't have to fast travel. You don't. Oh, no, no. There's, you don't have to do something. Go back to orbit. Select what you're going to do next. Load. Do your thing. Then go back to orbit every time. It's, that was exhausting. You can now just fast travel around, doing everything really quickly. From um, planet to planet. Yeah, planet to planet, yeah. zone to zone in the planet. So, like, let's say you're on Earth. You do a public event on Earth. Then you see there's another public event happening on the other side of the Earth zone. You can just fast travel pretty much straight to it. Okay, cool. Then you're done there, and it's like, okay, I'm going to go to the tower now, and you just bring up the map and click the tower, and you immediately fast travel to the tower and spawn in at the tower. Like, that, that is huge as well, honestly, because <laughs> the amount of time you spent going to orbit and going through loading screens and all that in the first game, it was horrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the the they've removed currencies, so there's a guy... A special vendor who shows up on the weekends. You probably encountered him in the first game, Zer. Yes. He's a squid face man. He sells exotics. You used to have to earn a currency to get them. Or you have to you used to have to earn strange coins to buy from Zer. Now, every time you dismantle um, a legendary item, which you will get a bajillion of them, you just get legendary shards. And the legendary shards are used for buying things from Zer. They're used for creating uh or infusing items so like i have this one gun that i'm going to feed to this other gun to make the the other gun more powerful right so it's like that that alone is like they've eliminated three currencies right there and mm -hmm. just made one so now it's like they, they've just done such a good job of of getting rid of all that stuff and it's just they've simplified that aspect of it so substantially and there's a lot of it that like I can just like name things and they won't mean anything to you because you don't remember them from the first game. But <laughs> yeah, I'm playing it in a long time. It's like they there are three basically like there are only three material or you know currencies now, and then everything else is just feeding the vendors. Uh, like that's huge, honestly. And most importantly, they've made it so that there's lots and lots of loot, and they've made it very easy for you to get to a point like where you're ready for end game they've made that extremely easy okay you are getting loot constantly in this game um maybe even too much because Damn. for the first like 10 hours you're just every drop is basically better than the last one so you use a gun for like 20 minutes and then it's like okay <laughs> throw this one out that sounds good to me yeah no i i think it is um and the biggest change is definitely the, the the ease with which you get to, let's say, 280, which is the light level, which is, by the time you get to 280, you can play everything in the game without issue, okay. more or less. You, that's very much raid ready, nightfalls, all that. You get there just by playing the game. There is no grind required. I mean, okay, there is a grind in that there's only so much content in the game. You're going to have to replay stuff. You know, yeah, you're eventually, gonna, yeah. You're going to redo <laughs> public events constantly, but that's fine because they're very fun and very fast and extremely easy to get to. Um, but just the act of playing that game, 15, may, yeah, probably 15 hours of playing, you'll be at 280. Oh, okay. And then... And that's excellent and i know for some people um that's a problem because some people play this game you know they treat it like it's their only game which is fine um there was a lot of grinding in the first game and a lot of like random perks on weapons and stuff like that which is not present anymore and i know some people find that disappointing that they're three weeks into the game's life and have done everything there is to do but i don't I don't care. That's fine by me. Yeah, yeah. Um, me too. I've put like 40 hours into it across two characters, even though I know I'm going to abandon it soon and switch to the PC. Both times it was a pleasure to get to the 280, 290 light level, or power level now is what they call it. And it was fast and easy and enjoyable to do that. And 
that's huge. Like the first game for so long, even into the Taken King, you had to grind a lot to get yeah. to the appropriate light level. And they definitely reduced it over the lifetime of that game. By the Taken King, it was much more manageable. But the first year that that game was out, the fucking grind was terrible. I hate. Mm-hmm. I hated it. Even though I did it all, <laughs> I was one of those people that was stuck at a light uh, at a power level or whatever they called it back then for like a month, you know. And the first time I did the raid, I got one piece of gear from the whole thing. I got some <laughs> boots, and that was it. And yeah. you fucker, you got like everything when we did it, and I hated it. Whoop. But like. For some people, that's going to be a problem. But honestly, I think the the whole game is easier. It's easier for people to get into. It's easier for people to enjoy. It's easier for people to understand. And it's easier for people to get to a point where they can see all the content. And I think that's a good thing. I think yes. that's... But it, that sounds like it's catering to one specific audience, though. Like the me. What about the hardcore people who just want to sit in it all day? I don't know. I'm not one of those people, so... Is there not much I'm to sort do of, once you're done? I'm sort of in between. Um, in that, if when I run out of things, then I, I'm okay with just not not playing it for a few weeks. Yeah. Or or playing it, you know, once a week on reset day to do all the, the milestone activities and maybe get slightly higher level gear. But it's just, at that point, it's just, I like checking off this checklist every week for a few hours because... The truth of it is, Destiny is really fun to play. Mm-hmm. Like that also is still a huge important factor. the The core loop of playing that game is incredibly comfortable and satisfying for me, and that it's a huge part of why I put so much time into the first game. Is just it's mindless and easy, more or less, and satisfying in a way that most games aren't and Mm -hmm. i think yes it definitely seems like from my readings online that there is a a portion of the community the really hardcore destiny community that doesn't love most of these changes in destiny 2 but i think even for someone like me who is fairly hardcore at least you know compared to you (laughs) i'm completely fine with all these changes it definitely in losing some of the bullshit that was part of the first game's charm in a way where it's just, but let's be, like it was not a quality thing it was not a pleasant thing it was it was good to cut that shit out because it was bad even though i look back on it now kind of nostalgically like ah oh, i kind of miss all these different Ooh, currencies really? but in reality if those if those things were all back again, I would have been pissed mm-hmm. and disappointed. So, yes, they targeted a specific audience, but that's where the majority of the people are, I think. Yeah, you know, the hardcore yeah. community is certainly of a good size, but I think the majority of people are okay with playing it and then taking a break. And that seems to be the way they want you to play it as well, honestly. Uh, they just from like PR talk and and even in game like the weekly reset. It just seems like a game that you should play on you know once or twice a week and then put it down and then come back and then put it down and um, yeah I I think it's the the changes are substantial and almost ninety percent like almost hundred percent of them are positive. And and for the better, I think. Um, True. So, Good to hear. Yeah. It's it's a it's a the, the first game took the the first game was a disaster at launch, um, and it took them at at least a year, which was when the Taken King came out. It took them over a solid year to stabilize, and like they were basically teetering on the edge of falling into to complete flaming disaster for a year and then the taken king came out and it was like okay we have put the fire out we've made the ground underneath us stable now let's try to make destiny bigger and better in a way that is not like stitching bullet holes (laughs) um so from the taken king onwards it was good 
but there were still lots of lingering issues. And then this game, it definitely feels like, and this is where all the, it's an expansion pack memes come from. It definitely feels like them saying, let's do Destiny 1 launch game. Let's do that again, but do it right. So that this time we don't spend a year fixing all the holes, fixing all the problems and stabilizing. Let's put a game out that is an extremely sturdy, solid foundation. And then let's now build up from that from the get-go instead of a year after launch. Uh, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good thing. I Still, it plays great. It looks fucking unbelievably good. Mm-hmm. And the loop is satisfying. There's way less bullshit. And I'm very interested to see where they go from here uh, with the DLCs and expansions and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, I like it a great deal. I think it's... Um, Definitely the best Destiny thing to date by a, a pretty substantial margin. Yeah, okay, good. I, I was expecting some more details into like the systems and stuff, but I'm I'm glad you held back a bit. Yeah, I know you wanted to just sort of you know keep. There's a lot of stuff that you can go into, but I think it's easier to do when you know what I'm talking about as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't want to spoil everything. It's got issues, you know, like. Some of the events don't really reward you with gear that is any, of any use, so it's sort of like, why should I do them? It's like, well, that's unique content, but, uh, you know, we'll get to that in the yeah. in full I proper review, I think. When we uh, come back for the next talk, we'll have done everything. We'll talk about the strikes and the raid, hopefully. Yeah, maybe. We might have to wait until, I don't know, the end of November. <laughs> Because, yeah. I mean, the game comes out right at the end of October, so we'll do... We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, yeah you're probably right. It might be a slightly delayed next episode, but... Um, I don't think it might. Mi- it matters. Yeah. We might not have gone to the raid, but even... Like, the raid is just one thing, you know? It's just... Mm-hmm. The leading up to that point is where the majority of True. the game is. Yeah, so. yeah. that's the core. Um, oh, also, I still hate the PvP. I think it's terrible. Yeah, well, I played some on PC. I, I didn't hate it. Um, yeah, you didn't play enough. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, the sh- it's it's mainly just their network stuff. I think is just it's atrocious. Like mm-hmm. the consistency with which you get killed around a corner, or you trade kills with the person you're shooting or yes. meleeing or whatever. Um, that happens like almost 100 percent of the time. Like almost Jeez. every single fight. The damage feels completely inconsistent to me, um, where it's like, I shoot a guy. I, I played one match last night, just to remind myself before doing this review, and there was one part where I shot a guy like two or three times, then meleeed him, then threw a grenade, and I died, and his health bar was barely even at half health. Oof. And then I respawned literally right next to three enemies and got immediately killed, and our team lost by 80 points because the matchmaking is also horribly unbalanced where it's like these people are all pro video gamers and my team has never played a video game in their life and it feels like every game is like that (laughs) and i i just for how much i enjoy the the pve i i don't think there's ever been such a huge discrepancy in enjoyment for me between two modes because i truly loathe the multiplayer and it baffles me that this is made by the same people that made the halo multiplayer games um yeah i, I just esports ready <laughs> i no. <laughs> no one should watch or care about destiny and com- in competitive in any way because it's <laughs> just a disaster and the the extent to which people enjoy and play that multiplayer is it's just mind-boggling i i just <laughs> i i hate it so much um <laughs> But that was the same. It, it's definitely better than the first game. Like, definitely. Wow. But it's still, I still hate it. Okay. I mean, the first game, literally, there were, mm, I think, seven or eight ways to one-shot someone in that game. And so every single combat encounter you got into was just you getting one-shotted. Unless it was slightly long range. And so they've allevi- they've gotten rid of that. Like, it, you don't get one-shotted much anymore. Good. I Great. don't think I, I really care. I don't think I'll be playing it. No, I, I, 
might play it here and there on the PC just because it's on the checklist every week, which oh, I hate. God. Um, but I, if I was smart, I would never touch the multiplayer again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. Yeah, I just... Uh, ugh, no thanks. So, yeah. yeah. I look forward to talking about it more in depth. Uh, yes, I am very much looking forward to playing it on PC. I wasn't looking forward to Destiny 2 six months back. I actually thought mm-hmm. I was going to skip it. I really <laughs> thought I was going to skip it because I was so done with Destiny. Uh, and then when I played the PC, sorry, the PS4 beta, I was like, oh, this is is it all right, actually? Maybe I could get back into this. And then when I played the PC beta, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and now I'm back in. And I'm really looking forward to it. It looks incredible on PC from what I've seen in the beta. Um, and I don't really have a game on the go right now, which is like mm. you jump in, you do some checklist quests and some chores, and you've, you've burnt 45 minutes and you're done. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that's not going to be what it's like for the first month or so. I'll be playing a lot, but I'm looking forward to having one of those games in my rotation again. Because I don't really have like even a multiplayer game right now that I play. Yeah, and that's what's so nice about this game is it's not competitive. And... <laughs> It's extremely comfortable and, for the most part, very easy. And um, I need something like that because I'm really yeah. tired with playing competitive games. Something a bit mindless, something to listen yeah. to like music and podcasts with. I need yeah. one of and those again. And it's great to play with other people, you know, and just yeah. sort of chat casually or do it, you know, like golf it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just turn your brain off, talk to people, do some shooting, you know. Um, I mean, Destiny's got no chance against golf it. I mean, no, uh, let's be serious. Yeah. Oh, there's one other system that they added. They they there were clans in the first game, but they were completely meaningless. Yeah. In this game, it, it's a huge part of the game. Um, in that there are like a lot of dedicated menus to it, and there are some really neat rewards and stuff with it. So when you join a clan, um, there are weekly rewards for Nightfall, Crucible, Raid, and Trials of the Nine which is the mega competitive mode with special loot. And if people in your clan complete those things with one or two other clan members, everyone in the clan gets a reward from that thing. So Hmm. last night I saw the random clan that I'm in, clan that I'm in, join or completed the raid, cleared it for the week, checked the postmaster or whatever her name is, and there was an engram there and it was the raid sword and i didn't have to play the raid and wow i think that is awesome (laughs) that is awesome i'm not gonna do anything (laughs) you guys can do it all for me yes it's a cool it's a really neat system it's very smart it works really well you guys are gonna hate that yeah (laughs) yeah i should i shouldn't have said anything (laughs) Like, do you want to do, like, uh, the raid, Nightfall Joe? Ah, but you know what? I'm really tied up today, guys. You only get mm. one piece of stuff from it, though. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna get a whole it, but it is, it, it can be, like, like it's it's still a, a crazy system. And, yeah. And I like that a lot. It's a, uh, Trials of the Nine, especially, because I will never play that. It's, it's the most horrible competitive experience you'll ever endure in your life. It's just misery. It's pure misery. I, but the I guns, think that's when I left, when it came into the first game. Trials of Osiris, yeah, probably it was right around. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe I, I, I don't know. But the guns, the, the the guns are really neat looking and too, and they're only available in that mode. So if I can just let the clan mates do it, <laughs> yeah, then sweet victory. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that was. It's a really neat system. Very. It's a very cool, very smart way to do that. And it's another one of those things where it's like, this game is so much friendlier because you could barely even get loot in the first game, let alone get it for free. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. I look forward to the PC release a great Me too, a lot. I am ready and down. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, trucking along. Now, a video game we've both played. Oh, oh man, yeah. I was I was enjoying this. I was just scanning through Reddit, you know, watching <laughs> movies. God damn now it. i got to talk. Dishonored, Death of the Outsider. Um, we have both played Dishonored 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And I would say that we're fans. We are fans of the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really liked Dishonored 2, and I hate that I wasn't able to get it onto my list. 
for the best games of that year because I think that game is a marvel of level design. Yeah. Yeah. So jumping into Dishonored 2, um, I have a few mixed feelings about Death of the Outsider. I would agree. I would say it's a bit of a roller coaster of highs and lows. Yeah. Um, when it first starts out, um, it's more Dishonored 2 than I expected it to be. Uh, I know it's an expansion and it's built off the the core game. But the first level, I would say there's four main levels, right? I would say two, three, four, and five. Yeah, four. four levels. Yeah, the, the bank mission is sort of reusing a, an already... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the first main level felt exceedingly similar to Dishonored 2 in a way that kind of disappointed me at first. Um, your character, I think she's called Billy, is given some new powers, which add a little bit of variance to how you play, but not a huge amount. They're kind of like a spin-off of some of the powers you have in the previous game. The blink power from Dishonored 2 is back, but instead of... Straightly, sorry, strictly teleporting to one place, you you can place markers, which I didn't understand how was different at all to begin with until you start merging it with your second power or your second right. primary power, which is I call it the free cam power. I don't remember yeah, what it was yeah, called. I don't know what it's but called. You, that you, you float around as an eye in the sky, and you can mark enemies, and you can also use that power to place a marker, which you can teleport to. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a power where you can steal the faces of people. And you look like them, and you can obviously get into secure locations easily. I never once used that ability. I never used it either. I, I, I tried no it idea. on a guard, and it said it just nothing happened, and I was like, okay. And I never touched it again. <laughs> so. Well, it wasn't easy to use because you couldn't. It would have been nice if there was like a lethal option where you literally absorbed the person and you became them from a became them for a limited time but you always kind of left them on the ground unconscious when you did it so you had is to there think like about any physical face ripping or is it just like no. a, a projection sort of thing now it's like a void particle animation oh, where that's lame. Yeah, i wanted and... her to like go down and like pull out her knife and just start cutting <laughs> It would have been really awesome if you, like, m physically merged with them. They were gone from yeah. existence. They were dead, and you were, like, in their place. But the one time I tried it, uh, I did it in quite a public area, and they just mm. drop to the ground, and you <laughs> are them, but they're just unconscious. So you kind of take their right. face, and then they pass out. And I was like, oh, this is this is not as cool as I expected. Mm -hmm. um, sticking with powers, I was a little bit disappointed with the variance of the powers. Yeah. that they, they really want to push... Stealth, I think, with these powers, that they are mm. stealthy powers. In, in Dishonored 2, you had some pretty ruthless abilities where you could just shred <laughs> yeah. people. Do, am I? Were there bees in the second one? I seem to remember bees. Was that the first um, one? Wasps? I don't, I don't remember. Maybe because, you know, once you beat it the first time, you can do that playthrough where you have both player characters' mm -hmm. powers. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not sure. I never got into that. I, need, I, I still want to. Yeah. Um, maybe? I don't know. But there was Probably. some there was powers to complement both playthroughs, play styles. Yeah. You could be yes. horrible or you could be sneaky and the There were the a ability. lot in the first game or in yes. the second game. Like Loads. you know, if you do the playthrough where you have all the powers, it's probably like a dozen or mm -hmm. maybe and and they all have upgrades. Um, yes, that's true, yeah. This one it's three powers and there are no upgrades. Yeah, and, and it all focus around stealth. And one of the powers I literally never touched. So it's like there are two powers. Uh, yeah. How did you, yeah. before we go further, how did you play the original two games, we just say? Were you a sneakster or a murderer? I hit control, which crouched me, and then yeah. crouch walked through that entire game <laughs> and almost never murdered anyone or did anything aside from... I, that game, honestly, the way I've played it, it's almost like a platformer puzzle game where it's just like, <laughs> how do I get to this thing without alerting anyone? And I really yeah. enjoy playing it that way. Like mega stealth, low lethality, just get through, uh, get to the other side and slowly, you know, by crouch walking and teleporting. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a bummer to me that I play that way because there are so many neat powers, especially in two. Mm -hmm. But... The game has always seemed like it's meant to be played that way because yeah, the first power say, you yeah. get yeah. is the most overpowered power in the game, and it's I could teleport to any almost anywhere, you know, within visible sight ranges, mm -hmm. 
and it's so brokenly powerful and why wouldn't i play it that way yeah also, I, I was gonna say in your defense yeah two especially really felt like it was encouraging you to be non-lethal especially since the non-lethal takedowns of the main targets in <laughs> two were the most a- entertaining and darkest yeah. moments in the entire game the non-lethal yes. takedowns were like an extra bonus challenge and their results were kind of horrific and interesting and it was much yeah. better doing it that way and i think every player sub- kind of like knows underneath that if you are non-lethal you get a brighter ending at the end so there's all this encouragement to be the nice guy in Dishonored 2 so I don't blame you for playing that way but because of that that encouraged me to start out Dishonored (laughs) Death of the Outsider by being a bit of a bastard and just absolutely slaughtering everyone yeah I you, you can't quite run around like an absolute lunatic you don't have much life and if you get attacked head on you can die very easily but as you said with teleportation crossbows grenades it's very easy especially with experience in two of the games now to just stay somewhere high up and pick people off and um i was enjoying it i was enjoying playing it differently i think we should go into the main thing which makes this game different from the other Uh, entries which is the side quests the contracts which is new right that wasn't in the last Mm -hmm. games yeah it's new uh so the contract system is simply a side quest system Uh, some of them are pretty simple and some of them have to change the way you play completely Mm -hmm. and i i pursued them because i'm not a completionist but i like to do all of the content which is in a game if i can (laughs) and i i think the contracts are the best part about the dlc um, yeah. The levels themselves, they're not bad levels, but they are they don't push the envelope when it comes to what Dishonored does. Yeah, um, and not in the way that Dishonored 2 pushed level design. Yeah, yeah but I opinion. enjoyed the levels which had the most interesting contracts tied to them. Mm-hmm. So the second level is kind of warming you up and it has some like fetch quests. It has one uh, fun assassination where you have to make it look like an accident. That was mm. a little bit interesting. But apart from that, I could still do my usual ruthless murdering. And I got it done without much trouble. But when you get into the bank heist mission, there's a contract where you can't be uh, yeah. detected at all. Like, you can't knock anyone unconscious. No one can know you were ever there. And you're doing quite an elaborate heist of a sword in a bank vault. And I'd never played Dishonored in that fashion. It was completely new to me. I think you said you played a lot like that, but I'd never mm-hmm. done that. I didn't even say my usual playstyle Dishonored is be as sneaky as possible. But once I was I was seen, I was detected, I kind of dealt with the people that I had to, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Stealth until spotted was, was my strategy. But playing in a way where I couldn't be spotted at all and I couldn't even knock people out was really, really interesting. I saved scum the hell out of it, but there were some sequences where I had to literally wait for a person to turn around and as they were turning around teleport behind them at the appropriate time so i whizzed right. past them and that bank high stealth mission if i had saved scum properly would have been pretty was pretty easy um because <laughs> i knocked everyone in the building out with that sleeping gas before yes, okay you too, did yeah. okay yeah there's only like three enemies that are awake in that area when yeah once you've done I, that but i, I um did not save scum appropriately and fucked <laughs> myself so it was a disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it got interesting. I think when you move the vault, it's like a motorized yeah. vault. A yeah. bunch of people wake up on the floor, and that's when I was like, "Oh shit, this yeah. is getting really, really interesting." <clears throat> and then a juxtaposition to that is the next mission. You have a contract which says you have to kill everyone. I like that one. <laughs> Absolutely everyone, and that was which, awesome. which sounds mindless, but it was actually a challenge in itself because I I couldn't find the last two people for a while. Yeah. I was running around this building, there's dead bodies everywhere. And I'm like, where the (laughs) fuck are these people? And I I think playing those missions back to back was my favorite Dishonored experience out of the whole franchise. Just forcing you, well, not forcing you, giving you the option, if you want to pursue the contracts, to play so drastically different. Yeah. It was really fun. I I played those missions back to back in one sitting, and those two missions were just an absolute blast. Because I think we had this discussion in Prey... And talking about Zelda, sometimes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if the game doesn't force you to be creative, you just do what you think is right. And sometimes being pushed down a path actually leads to some of the funnest experiences in these um, 
uh, Freeform Immersive the, Sims. Immersive Sim in these immersive yeah. Sim games. And I liked being forced to be horribly brutal and stealthy back to back. It was really, really interesting to me. And those that's two the levels type of were... nudging that I wish. Yeah, that's the that's what I want. Yeah, from more it's still of these optional. Games. Yes, totally. And like the money reward. Honestly, after like the second world, or maybe, yeah, I would say the second mission, like I had bought all the upgrades I wanted. You yes, know? me too. Um, Completely I useless. Don't I don't need more <laughs> bone charms because you get like seven thousand of them in this game. Yeah. And I had I had been using the same for pretty much the whole game. And oh yeah, I stopped seeking them out after a few levels because I, I yeah. felt fine about what I had. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, it's you get an extra few hundred dollars if you mm -hmm. don't if you do or don't do this this contract and uh yeah i i really enjoyed the contracts i think i was thinking as i was playing i wish these were in dishonor 2 because yeah 100%. i mean they, there are certainly some side quests in dishonor 2 and mm -hmm. and side things to do and alternate interesting alternate ways to do missions but it's a really good way to add more to that to that world um because that second mission like that is a big level it's like a sort of medium like a little open world area yeah, it's big with multiple streets and a lot of apartments and stuff like that and i spent like two and a half hours doing the second mission and and it was great i really enjoyed it and then i didn't like the bank heist mission at all to okay. be honest yeah I, I thought the back like getting into it was really frustrating and then once i was in it i uh, i just eh, it didn't do it didn't do a lot for me i liked the fourth mission back going back to the Royal Conservatory mm -hmm. from Dishonored 2. I thought that was cool. I was worried it would just be like the same level, but they enough had they had like completely rebuilt the whole interior yeah. because time has passed in the world. And it was very satisfying killing fucking everyone. Um, <laughs> and I thought the last mission was not very good. Um, yes, I didn't enjoy the last mission either. Yeah. It so was strange. I, hmm. I was just going to summarize the last mission. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was a strange choice because it was very linear, yeah, and the enemies in your way were feeble. None of them even had helmets on, so they were just crossbow fodder, and yeah. they weren't a challenge at all. And then when you crossed over into the void section, yeah. and you're just backtracking, there's these pretty difficult enemies in your way. And I, I had a little battle with one. I was like, Christ, this thing's <clears throat> difficult. So I just avoided them, and it was designed yeah. in a way which was really, really easy to just skip past them. I, I just ran past them. It was fine. Yeah, and then and then you get to the ending sequence. I was like, ah, oh, okay, not mm -hmm. not the strongest, not the strongest I, missions. <clears throat> I think my favorite change is the um, complete elimination of mana elixirs. You just have recharging ah, uh, yes, yes, uh, which is phenomenal. Because <clears throat> if I ever go back to Dishonored Two, I am totally enabling a cheat that gives me infinite. <laughs> Uh, mana so that i can just use those powers because they're all really cool powers and too yeah well you, you've done I the was game properly once haven't you yeah it was nice to have the recharging thing not having to worry about it if they were to ever make more dishonored which eh, i doubt it at this point i would hope that they bring that over because it's i don't know it's just it's more fun that way even though there are not many powers to use in this i think recharging is just better it's just a better solution yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the writing and story stuff in Dishonored has ever been interesting. No. Their world is interesting from like an aesthetic point of view and there is some okay environmental storytelling in some of the apartments in the second yeah. game. There wasn't much of it in this game, but in the second game there was some, you know, you find the bar and it's like what's happening at the bar, stuff like that. No, no attachment to the main plot, but um, mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> the writing is very simple i think the worst part of the storytelling aspects of all three games is the voice acting they hire um movie actors to do their voice acting and movie actors need direction and i don't think most video game voice directors are very good at directing movie directors uh, yeah. or movie actors because and this was the same in dishonor 2 all of the voice acting is terrible <laughs> um what's her name playing that plays billy lyric it's um i recognize her voice um just a sec i have to look it up i i know her name it's Rose, rosario dawson <clears throat> okay she's great i like her a lot she's an she's a very nice likable actress she's good in a lot of things she is so fucking bored reading this script in this game mm -hmm. And it was the same in the last game. And everyone in Dishonored 2... Like, Dishonored 2 has a hell of a cast. 
Sam Rockwell is in it. Uh, Vince D'Onofrio is in it. Um, uh, the first game had an even bigger cast. It was like, uh, I have to remember some of these names. Susan Sarandon, Lena oh, really? Headley, Carrie Fisher, Brad what? Dourif. I didn't, know, I didn't know any of this when I played the first game. Chloe Grace Moretz. Like all these people. What the fuck? These are all great actors. Yeah. And a huge all cast. the voice acting in these games is so bad. They all sound so disinterested that in Dishonored 2, halfway through, I started. I skipped every single story uh, scene after about 40% through that game. Because yeah. it was so boring because the voice actors sounded like they didn't want to be there. And that's still the case here. And you combine that with writing that's just not very interesting. Um, and I just was so uninterested by the story. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about the world of Dishonored because it looks it's, cool. I like being yeah. in it. There's a lot I of like cool the... juxtapositions of technology as well. And Yeah, and it's like with all the harvesting of the whale and it's blah, blah, blah. It's like a part yeah. of the world and currency. And like, I, I like that, but I just I don't really give a shit about this void hubba baloo, you know? No. <laughs> I just want to get on with it. Yeah. Michael Madsen is so drunk in it as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's... playing Dowd. Uh, yeah, so like the story means nothing to me. It never has in Dishonored. It's a, it's yeah. purely a. The world is neat aesthetically, and mm-hmm. I like all the weird technology in it. And it's also miserable that world. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like all of that, but just yeah, I could not. I couldn't be less interested in the uh, in the plot of that game. And I have um, no idea what happened. I'll be honest. Yeah, and and I did both endings, and it's like one dialogue change. Uh, it's just like I don't care. Um, so, also, I hate the free camera spirit power ability thing. I, I don't yeah. like it at all because I would always try to get up and play something, and and the camera doesn't go up high. Oh like you yeah, get so you try to go up, and then it just goes and falls back down, and it's like yeah. What it's like? It's not reading the geometry properly, or there's a, it a had limit some on problems how high with it the. Uh, I can't remember which axis it is. <clears throat> the, the y axis going upwards. Yeah. There was one time where I was on a lift, uh, in the bank uh, mission. It's an optional way. You can go up into the roof of the bank. Huh. Oh I yeah, act- yeah, yeah. I activated the uh, the free cam, went mm. from the lift heading towards the roof, and the cam fell yeah. down to the ground. Because, like, it tries to, like, auto... I don't know what. It's just confusing. Yeah, it's it? like they didn't program it properly to, like, read all of the playable environment. And yeah, there's, like, a, a, a few times. 30-foot limit on it or something. It's very frustrating, I found. Um, and that being one of only two powers that I used meant half the time I was annoyed with the power. Yeah, I I liked the free cam when it came to using it to place the teleportation markers like through walls as like a small micro puzzle uh, in some areas. I liked that in the last mission. That that wasn't <laughs> in anything else in the I or I didn't discover that oh. you could do that until the last mission. And I, I liked it a those, lot in the bank. I like those couple of little puzzles where you have to like open the door and then like place something and quickly yes, teleport yeah. through. Yeah, I liked that. I didn't realize you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was very handy for the bank mission. I bet, very yeah. handy. Yeah, so uh, it was. It it just left me wanting to play Dishonored two, honestly, because yeah, I think it's a mixed bag. There's some good level design in this. Um, no one else makes games like Arcane. Like it still feels completely unlike all the other games out there and i was glad to have played it because dishonored is a quality series but mm-hmm. it left me just wanting to go back to two and experience yeah, it, it the felt... like genuine magic of some of those levels um mm-hmm. like the felt a bit safe and... to me when it comes to yeah. a standalone expansion it just felt a bit safe it felt like something they made in a year <laughs> or just under yeah a year, you know they didn't innovate much they didn't do much interesting with the level design was a little underwhelming mm-hmm. um especially also after prey i think for me at least where mm-hmm. it's like i understood and and i used a lot of the systems i understood like the the joys of playing a game in weird ways and mm-hmm. this game i i fought a lot of guys i did a lot of combat and i discovered that i really don't like the combat in dishonored i don't think it's good at all that, yeah, <laughs> so the halfway through the game i was like stuff. fuck this Not i'm going back to stealth um mm-hmm. And then I just crawled through the rest of the game like I've always done. and um, <laughs> Slugged it. Yeah, it was a little disappointing. Uh, 
Yeah, I um, I I really enjoyed, as I said, the middle section. Yeah, I, I mean, had yeah. the best time with the franchise from level three and four, but before that and after that, I thought it was fine. You know, I think if I, the last mission had been stronger, I would have come out of it feeling better. Yeah, the payoff wasn't very great, and I don't no. know. Just for standalone expansion, you know, we played the Witcher expansions, we played Lost Legacy. Sometimes you're looking for something a bit mixed up and different from what we played we played two of yeah. them now and uh i don't know just didn't quite deliver okay. on what i was expecting yeah yeah i, if um, I think if you're a fan of the franchise it's still worth picking up mm-hmm. yeah the middle two three four those are all really good levels yeah um but yeah i i i just wanted it just left me wanting to go back to two because i think two is just a, a substantially more interesting game uh, in pretty much every way from a level design and gameplay point of view so yeah i think we mostly agree yeah it was harmless i wasn't mad for having played it no me neither it was but sitting in the middle yeah yeah but moving on to a more recent game <laughs> one that i never thought was going to come out it was starting to move into that category of legendary it was, games it was yeah but Cuphead just kind of snuck out. It's out now. I can't yeah. believe it. So I guess when it comes to good old Cuphead, after all these years of seeing it, the biggest novelty about the game has been the way it looks. Yeah. So what do you think about how it looks? It looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it does look pretty good, doesn't it? It's, um... It's, like, kind of miraculous, I think, mm. in a way, that, like, the, the extent to which they have embraced this aesthetic not just visually but also like uh, you know the audio and animation it. the entire visual stylistic presentation of the game is remarkable yeah. and like wholly and utterly unique even though it's obviously borrowing from 1930s cartoons but in games there has never been anything that looked like this and it looks yeah fucking unbelievable i guess people didn't do it because they knew it would be an absolute nightmare and take seven <laughs> yeah. years to make yeah yeah um it was worth it in my point of, in, in my opinion uh the art is incredible and i've seen all of it because i beat the entire game yeah you're, you're really good at it apparently in two hours i played all of cuphead fucking are you incredible man also I might have enabled God Mode because I'm terrible at Cuphead. Uh. And so I'm not going to really talk about Cuphead much because I I played 30 minutes of it for real and um, hated playing it because I, I'm just fundamentally not good at these types of games and I don't have the patience for them nor the like mental or physical capabilities to play them it seems because i have little muscle memory with these platformer shooty run and gun type things yeah um it took me like 25 minutes to beat the first level and then i was and i was furious the entire time and so <laughs> i made a decision uh, that not, i want that to long. see no well i know but i i it was I was so upset playing it and so not enjoying playing it. That yeah. I, and I knew, and this came up constantly as I was playing it in God mode, because I wanted to see all the art. So I said, I'm going to find a cheat. I'm going to enable it. And I want to see all the art in this game. And I did. And it was, I was very happy to have seen all the art because it is amazing. There's so mm -hmm. much personality and humor and just everything about the presentation is amazing. But I also knew as I was playing it that, there was no fucking way I would ever have done, like, seen even a third of this game playing it normally. Because I, I'm just not good get? at it. I'm just fundamentally not good at playing these games. And I have no patience for them. And if I'm put off by it quickly, like I was with Cuphead, if I can't cheat my way through it, I will never play it again. And so yeah. that's my review of Cuphead. I can't review it. All I can yeah. say is it looks incredible. It does. Um, I was thinking about this recently, where I personally have had a really good time recently. I've been spoiled with visual art in video mm. games. I, I went through Persona 5 uh, a little while back, and I beat that, and Jesus Christ, that game looked amazing, and I just started Transistor. Right. And then I jumped into Cuphead, and I'm like, my God, 
I have just been spoiled with how good these games look. Cuphead is really up there with one of the most interesting and beautiful games I've seen in its own specific novel way. It looks incredible. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about how it plays. I, There's, I'll say one go. more thing, which I know I can re is an appropriate. I can review the. I don't think the default control scheme is very good. Yes, I've switched it. Anyways, that's all. <laughs> go yes, on. Yes, if you haven't played Cuphead, rebind the shoot button to RT on your controller or the right yeah. trigger of whatever you're using. Because yeah. having it on X, it's... you have to like use a claw form on your hand. To it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, Cuphead's in its foundation is pretty simple. There's two formats to the levels. There's run and gun and there's boss fights. Let's start with the boss fights. It seems like the boss fights are probably 80% of the game as well. Yeah, I think there's six run and gun levels and a shit ton of bosses. Yeah, probably 20 or so, I, I would say. So Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's a real great variance in boss fights. I'm yeah. sure you've seen them all now. You see more than me, actually. I, I should have say. seen I'm on the every one of them. I'm on the third island. How close to the end of the game am I? There's only three worlds. Okay, so I'm on. So, I just started the last world. So yeah, get, so getting there. There's there's like five or six in that one, and then it's the basically the last sort of chunk. You know, the last couple of penultimate like story boss fights or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I, I played quite a lot of boss fights. I must be through 15 or so now, and they all have great variants in the way they play, the weaknesses of the bosses. And they are the traditional try, fail, trial, trial, fail, learn a little bit more. This time, give it another go and eventually. Throw your controller get... across the room, pick yes. it back up, try some more, fail some more. It's, it's the typical trial and error. You learn a little bit more information each time, you get a bit further until it's done. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing about the boss fights is, in my opinion, very inspired or groundbreaking in the genre. It's been done. From like a design point of view, like mechanic yes, point of just view. Just from right? a boss platformer type of view. Yeah. You've seen all these stuff in Shovel Knight and all these upcoming platformer games over the last few years. But what I think they've done, in my opinion, a miraculous job of is the difficulty balance. Because difficulty balance is really, really hard to get right. Like I pray I played through the Souls games and there's always that one boss where you're like, that boss is a fuck. And the rest of them are okay, if you know what I mean. Or this just is all over the place sometimes in the Souls games, where this boss was fine for you, and this boss you want to tear your scalp off. But so far, I think I, as I said, like 15 bosses in, maybe, maybe less, maybe more. I, I, ha okay, I've just got to the first boss where I've had like my first minor complaint about design, but up until then, every single boss I've kind of beaten in the same amount of time, about. 10 to 20 attempts, 15, 20 minute bursts. And I just think they've done a really, really good job with the difficulty balance because I'm always on like the edge of getting frustrated. Like mm. I'm teetering on the edge of like gritting my teeth, but I never really get there. And it's I'm like so a- jealous. <laughs> and maybe it's because like I practice with the genre and I know what I'm doing. Maybe for other people it's absolutely infuriating and this compliment means nothing to most people. But for me personally, I haven't got angry. And before this game, I've been still trying to beat Neo. And my God, do I get mad at Neo? Like I get <laughs> like really aggressively angry and like twisting my controller. But with with um, Cuphead, it's just, I don't know. They're riding this, this thin line for me mentally, which mm -hmm. makes it okay for me to just jump back in, give it another go. I think the length of the boss fight is really well balanced as well. I think if you if you were to calculate your time it took you to beat the boss, it's probably like four minutes, three minutes, uh, the, something yeah, like that. Yeah, the actual, like, if you go in and beat it in, oh, when you beat it in one go, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, two to four yes. minutes, I would say. Exactly, yeah. Which yeah. Is, it's fast, yeah. And it gives you this one more go mentality, which is kind of addicting. At least within the boss you've started. It's really hard to start a boss fight and then to walk away from it. Once also I start that, one. That system where when you fail and it shows you how close you were to beating it. Yeah. I didn't notice that. I didn't really see much of that. And I didn't really realize it was there. But then I went back and looked at it. And I was like, oh, wow, that is so mean. <laughs> yeah. and they, It's um, like you were like 1% away from finishing it. And you fucked up. And now you have to yeah, do it I've all had that again. Yeah, a few times. That is... Oh. 
There's also some variance in the different phases of the boss fights. Sometimes its second phase will be completely different from one fight to another. There's not a huge uh, variety, but sometimes it has two optional um, evolutions in its phase and you'll get a different outcome sometimes and you have to prepare for all of these different situations. I've had a few moments where some of the RNG in the game has been a little bit bullshit. I, I, I'm assuming a lot of it when it comes to like the platforms in the sky when they're moving is a bit procedural and sometimes like you land on the only platform you can and there has to be a projectile in the way and you're like I couldn't I couldn't have avoided that. Yeah. Um, that happens. I'm just assuming that's because there's RNG elements in the boss fights and projectiles all over the place. But apart from that, so far, I haven't beat the game. I haven't had many complaints. I've just got to my first boss where I think it, visually it's a bit messy. Mm. I don't think we have yeah. any footage of it, but if people have played it, it's the honeycomb boss at the begin beginning of the third island. And it's just, it's just not as clean as the others. The colours aren't contrasting as well, and I just can't see what the fuck's going on, especially with this specific shooter I'm using, yeah. the projectile, the laser. Um, I, I think the game does a really good job of giving you enough options that makes each fight a little bit different and gives you your own taste and preferences in the way you take down bosses without being overwhelming. There is a shop in the game and you can buy different powers and different projectiles and they all have very minor differences and they have... Um, Advantages and disadvantages, one will have longer range but slightly less damage and switching through those depending on the situation is like a very small but influential strategic choice you have to make which I like. I like thinking about which one would work for this boss. And apart from that the format of the game is, is very simple. Uh, I haven't talked about the run and gun levels yet. I don't really like the run and gun levels. I think they were included to mix it up a bit. Because I think they're like completely optional as well. Like I don't think you need to complete any of them to get, because like when you complete a level, it sort of draws well, in. Well, yes, bridge but they have something. they have all the co uh, the coins in them, and the coins are used to buy That's the powers, yeah, yeah. and the powers are very helpful later on. So I think they are kind of optional, mm -hmm. but also but kind really. of mandatory if you right. just don't want the default equipment. Right. Um, they are the weaker part of the game, in my opinion, for some reason. I think there should be checkpoints in it. I know difficulty is a large part of this game and it, it's part of its design, but it, it doesn't feel as repetitive redoing a boss fight because of its RNG in different phases as it does redoing a run and gun level. Uh, the run and gun level plays out the same every single time and when you've died at the end like five times, you're just kind of sick of like the beginning and middle of it. You're just doing the same shit over and over. And I, I guess you could apply the argument to the boss fights, but there's something about the boss fights which just feels a bit more, uh, a bit more diverse, a bit more less scripted, and there's it's something less rewarding about redoing run and gun over and over. And it just doesn't really feel like it, it fit in with the punishing go back to the beginning every single time design that the rest of the boss fights have. I, I don't really like them that much. But there's six of them in the entire game, and as you said, they're optional. The main bulk of the game is the boss fights, and so far, I like the boss fights. For me, the difficulty is well balanced, mm. nice variance in their designs, they're snappy, easy to redo, and they look amazing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having a pretty good time, and good. from the looks of it, I think a lot of the gaming community is jumping on board with Cuphead, which I'm surprised about. I've seen a lot of people pick it up and giving it a go. Yeah, it's always nice to see uh, a game that you know, a small number of people worked very hard on for a very long time. And, it, you know, it was born out of a passion for that style of cartoon. And, and it's it's interesting that not only did they make a game that looks utterly amazing, they also made a game that seems to be something that a lot of people really like to play. Yeah. And it seems like they made a game that is extremely tight. And, um, and that's cool. I, I wasn't expecting that. You know, when they said it's going to be really hard, like last year or something, I was like, oh, that's that's a bummer because I know I knew right then when they said that, it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I it's always on. You never know quite how it's going to be hard. It's mm -hmm. and for it to control so tightly and be like really seemingly like very tightly, meticulously designed from a gameplay point of view is uh, very very neat. Yeah, I think they've 
capitalized on that emotion that people have been quite addicted to since yeah. the Dark Souls franchise came out, which is like <laughs> yeah. the overcoming the odds, which was vacant from the gaming uh, world for a long time. We had some easy games and some shooters, and then Dark Souls came along, and people were like, actually, I like difficult games. But the Souls games can be very overwhelming. Uh, there's a lot of RPG elements, and some people just don't like that genre. Some people don't like the design, and this is kind of a comfy, pretty version of that. And it's in bite-sized portions, and I think people are getting into it who maybe weren't into the Souls franchise or haven't touched it before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think, I think it's doing it's... well, and it's, uh, it's one of those things which takes so long to come out, you think it's going to just fall on its face, and it's yeah. actually done what it intended to do very well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very impressive, and yeah, I, part of me wishes there was a, a way for me to play it like on an easy mode. Um, yeah, I'm. I don't understand. Like, it's been an argument on online for a long time where people were like, just put an easy mode in Dark Souls, and then the argument against that is, well, it's not supposed to be played like that, and it's like, yeah, well, you, you don't I, have to play it like that. It's optional. But like, I respect that from a design point of view. It's like we don't want to. Like, this game is hard. Fuck you. If you can't yeah. play it, like to an extent, I I respect that, especially more so with something like Dark Souls, where it's like we're, you know, this like grognard Japanese fucking hard impenetrable mystery game. This I think is a little more like, this is like a five year old would look at this and be like, holy shit, I need to play this. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's a little bit of a bummer that that it is. It's so like demanding from a. From there a there is um point of view. one difficulty option per boss. There's regular yeah, but and you can't progress if you do that. Um, oh really? Because I, get, I like, tried you it. You don't get the soul, I don't think, if you play oh, it on simple. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Yeah, or something like that. It, I tried it on simple and beat it, um, and I was like, oh, I don't get anything from doing that. Oh, so, it's like a practice mode, I guess. Sort of, yeah. That's what it seems like, and oh. it reduces the number of phases in the boss, so you don't see all the. All the oh, that's, art. well, it's not really useful for practice. I don't know what that's No, called. yeah. There's also an, an expert mode that unlocks when you beat the game, and I don't yeah, know what that's like. I looked into it. It's just everything. everything's faster. Which yeah. I don't There's also a think... black and white version, I think, uh, which oh, I would yeah. love to see. I read because... into that, and you have to go through the run and gun levels without shooting a single shot. It's like a pacifist <laughs> run, so I don't well, think I'm going to Well, I can do that easily. Oh, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> I might actually. I, I want to see what the game looks like in black yeah, and white. Yeah, let me know how that looks. Because you know, I'm not gonna do it. That's de you know, that's like the most. That's where all their inspiration comes from. Like the, it was all black and white back then. So I, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, that might look really good. Like. I think my favorite looking thing in that whole game is the shopkeeper. <laughs> yeah. I just love how he says "Welcome" every time, like in this really garbly, like yeah. really low quality voice, and he's just got this like really short idle animation. He just, it just looks so good. I love that <laughs> shopkeep so much. There's also. Yeah. A character in World Three that uh, is just one of the people you can talk to, and it's straight up the Betty Boop um, cartoon, <laughs> which, if you know what old cartoons are, that that's like one of the OG. I'm pretty that sure they were inspired from. And, I have an image uh, in my head. Yeah, she's got like the wide yes. cheeks. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I got it. They're, one of the she's like wearing sunglasses and like a big beach hat, but you can totally see it's her, uh, which is sort of cute. That's There's also them. keep your ears open during the. Um, the plane levels, I'm pretty sure when you trigger your super super, like when you have all five and you turn yeah. into a big atom bomb, I'm pretty sure it plays a little bit of the Ride of the Valkyrie. Uh, oh, really? And also the final like boss area is straight up, like the first six, six notes are James Bond. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That'll you'll hear it immediately. Notice. The James Bond especially, it's like, oh, this is the first few lean-in notes to the, of the James Bond theme. Which is <laughs> okay, fun. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great soundtrack. Um, yeah. And also for something that is a boss rush game where you yeah. can potentially beat every boss in four minutes, I think it's got a decent playtime. I think it's about a seven to eight hour game, which I think is pretty damn reasonable. Yeah. I'm not sure what the final count of bosses is, but I think there's a there's a bunch of them. Yes. It's like 20 to 30, possibly. 30 might be pushing it a bit. Maybe 20 or below is probably a more accurate number. But there's a ton of them. There's a lot of content... There's a section near the end, or right, basically right before the last thing, which 
could vary the boss count, let's say. I don't want to spoil Ooh, it for you because it's neat. Okay, it's, it seemed, when I saw that, I was like, oh, fuck, this seems like it's going to be a bitch to do in, <laughs> without oh, God that. mode. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, depends on how health regenerates. I'm not sure. Um, health it's a really regenerate. neat. It's a really neat. Oh, no, no, I mean, like, for this boss. specific sequence. It's okay. a really neat. It's a really neat thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to hear from those playing it yeah. how, how that went. I think I'm about four to five hours in. I'm sure mm. I've got a couple of hours left, and I, I'll be satisfied when it's done. It's been a nice little package. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes when you uh, when you kick into like a Dark Souls and you know you've got like a thirty to forty hour ride ahead, it can be exhausting. Mm. I'm I'm like sixty hours into Neo, and I can tell you I'm <laughs> fucking exhausted. So I it's bet. gonna be nice to not have to reach that point of fatigue with this game. It's gonna be over. If you want, obviously, because there's that optional mode. But for me, it's going to be over like seven hours. It's going to be nice. Okay. Yeah. Good hey, shit. Oh, yeah, it's super neat. It's so cool that it exists and and that it's doing so well. It's, yeah. It's, it's Agreed. nice to see. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that about summarizes that. Four games. Uh, next time we come back, it will be... Oh, God. The end it's of October or the beginning of November, and my God, it's gonna have yeah. to be the beginning of November because Wolf is out like on like those three games. Yes. what is it? You know, they all hit like in the last Friday of October. Yes, so. it might Got be a couple it. weeks later into November, but it's that's gonna, be, gonna a, be a big one. That is gonna be absolutely huge. Rip Mario, our banks, rip Wolf. our free time. What's it gonna I'm, be? I'm Mario? gonna be playing Evil Within for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, you'll do Evil Within, and then it'll be Mario for me, Wolf mm -hmm. for both of us, Destiny for both of us. High chance of South Park for me. I maybe South Park and maybe even AC Origins. We'll see. Maybe. <laughs> it could maybe. be like a seven game review round. Oh, boy, it's going to be as long as our bloody te top ten list. We can also always just not talk about all of them, but I yeah. doubt we'll be able to do that. There's going to be like at least four in that next one. It's going to be a big one. <sighs> we got so far with just doing three in each episode and it was perfect. Yeah, it's ruined our bloody life. format. And I don't know how to make a thumbnail now with four things <laughs> in it. <laughs> my, my thumbnail template is ruined. <laughs> All right. That about uh, summarizes it for the October month. Thank you guys very much for listening. September. All the way to the end. September oh, month, Joe. God. God, I'm terrible. Absolutely ruined. God, I'm so terrible <laughs> at this. Zero out of ten, dislike the video. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. We will be back next month for another epic long one. See you then. Enjoy the games. Bye-bye.